Whilst MI6 were busy eavesdropping through hotel doors, the American military were attempting to listen to a much bigger target, an entire army hidden in the jungles of Southeast Asia. Igloo White was the code name for a program designed to monitor uh, infiltration down the Ho Chi Minh Trail during the period of US involvement in Vietnam. There were dozens of different sensors developed. The size of a small tree, the ADSID, was the biggest of them all. This thing is thrown out of an airplane at 251 pounds coming out of the sky. It pretty much buries itself in the ground. So about the only thing sticking up is from about my hand up. So you'd be going down the trail, all you'd see is this little plant-like thing sort of buried in the woods. Once triggered by a specific sound, like a Viet Cong convoy setting off a mine, the sensor would send a signal to a nearby aircraft, which in turn related to a ground station. In theory, the trucks could then be located. I'm told that one of the problems was that this antenna, which is a very costly item to manufacture, is a copy of a plant that didn't exist in Vietnam. Consequently, the North Vietnamese coming down the trail would see this strange looking plant that didn't grow in Vietnam and say, hmm, must be another one of those American sensors. They dig it up and uh, there goes the sensor. We spent about $92 million on this program and it turned out that it didn't stop the infiltration. Plastic plants in the jungle may be easy to spot, but a tiny transmitter planted in a room is much, much harder to find. That's the job of a specialist bug hunter, known in the trade as a sweeper. In the early 1960s, the best way to locate a transmitting bug was to find its signal as it broadcast the stolen conversation over the airwaves. Think of that in relation to your radio and perhaps your car radio and how long it takes you to just keep on turning and turning and turning to look for a station. What you're covering with your radio is a fraction of the spectrum. In fact, it's probably something in the region of about that much. But a bug could cover that much. So now you've got to tune from there to there looking for the bug. And that could take you days, and that's the problem. In 1962, Lee Tracy invented the scanlock, and suddenly bug hunting got a lot easier. This is scanning all of the time a massive range, way into the gigahertz range. And it's doing so in less than a second for the whole scan. Now, I will switch this bug on, and if you watch these lights here, as soon as the red lights appear, it means that this has detected this bug and locked onto it. So I'll switch it on now. There, instantly, it's locked to it. And over the sound, your sound engineer will actually be picking up my voice through this bug. But in order to defeat the sweepers and their scanners, the eavesdroppers have developed innumerable ways to hide or disguise their transmissions. And with the development of remote control devices, if the eavesdropper suspected someone was looking for their transmission, then they could simply switch it off. But one man invented a bug hunting gadget that will find them regardless of whether they are working or not. That is the first of the booms, the nonlinear junction detectors. That's the very first of them, which I made 23 or 4 years ago. And uh, I did some very good detection with it. In the 1970s, the production model of Charles Beauville's machine was a closely guarded secret. Here's another bug. It works like a highly specialized metal detector, which will only find electronic components. The nonlinear junction is uh, to detect anything with a transistor in it by sending out a radiation which disturbs the transistor, which uh, immediately transmits. It's a brilliant concept when you think of that. Everything has to use a transistor now for size and power consumption and so on. And everything that has a transistor in it 
will be detectable on that device. New fibre optic devices will defeat Charles Beauville's machine. And in today's high-tech world, the days of the men in sheds are numbered. But whatever technology eavesdroppers use, in espionage, everyone expects the walls to have ears. We had a, a young uh, lady who was, uh, uh, I won't give her name, but cute as a bug's ear. She, we'd pick her up on telephone taps, and she, every so often, she just, she talked to her boyfriend somewhere, and she'd say, "Careful, the worms are listening," ha ha ha, and then keep right on going. But she was always thinking of us, and I just couldn't believe she was a communist.